I think we need to talk about Big Bank Take Little Bank. Yes, I do think that is a lyric from a couple of different rap songs. Yes, I used, I listen to that music. I like it. It's fun. But at the end of the day, let's talk with Taylor from Life Goal Investments. Big Bank Take Little Bank. I, I think you've hit the nail on the head. We've been talking about this for what now? Six, eight months? And even before yeah. the SVB blow up took place, we were talking about the stress that was causing on regional banks. We compared it to the SNL crisis back in the 90s. Uh, 80s and 90s, that is. Yeah, little banks get stressed with higher interest rates meaningfully in a short period of time, which is exactly what the Fed's done to them. Yeah, so we're recording this Monday morning. Uh, we have lots and lots of regional banks reporting later this week. To date, or at least as of this recording, we've really only had three big banks, J.P. Morgan, City, and Wells Fargo. Um, first, I guess the big banks, they all beat earnings, which again, yep. earnings were low, but they beat the earnings expectations and, and beat revenue. Uh, the one thing that I thought was interesting, I believe it was Citigroup. They actually released loan loss reserves. Yep. Right. It wasn't, I mean, it was 110 million bucks or something like that on a, you know, yep. on, a, on loan loss reserves. That was billions of dollars. Sure. But, and again, it may not have been City. It was one of those three. They released, and, and I don't think people really understand what that means. So you want to talk about that? Go ahead, break it down. I, I, this is this is uh, you have more uh, context on this one than I do, admittedly. So when so one of the things that you will see banks do when we go into tough times is they will take what's called loan loss reserves. They're basically saying, "Hey, our book of business is going to have some problems, and we're going to do a reserve. We're going to put it on the side that we're going to dip into as we have to write down loans or foreclose or anything of that nature." It kind of smooths earnings. That's that's it why it causes in, insurance, for lack of a better insurance. way of putting it. So, if that's what they do when they're scared, and they just unlocked or or released, as they call it, that means they over reserved. Yep. So again, this is one bank out of many. I I will be watching this week loan loss reserves. Are people reserving more? Are they stopping, which is what I expected, or will they follow suit and say, "Hey, you know what? It's not really that bad out there. Let's uh, we're not we don't need to be that scared." It's it's one of the right. many things I'll be looking at this week. Maybe people have overestimated this impact on commercial real estate and maybe. what they've written down on, on that loan front, or maybe it's something outside of that. You know, maybe it's the personal side that that seems to be improving. Yeah, they don't say. Um, yeah, I think it is right. one of those. Right? Is it is it the personal consumer is stronger than we expect? Right. There was this talk about all of this excess savings. And then somebody went back out and did the math and said, oh, shoot, we still have a trillion dollars in excess savings. That was that was a nice find. Like, wow. How, that's that's some fuzzy math right there. Um, but at the end of the day, it might be you might be commercial real estate, because, again, I I think there's huge pain coming to commercial real estate collectively. But what people keep getting wrong and maybe the banks did, too. The debt. Is actually not going to take it on the chin. It's all the equity. Right. Right. Because again, the you know, people don't know this, but commercial loans, you know, kind of top out at 75% LTV, which means there's 25% of equity that gets hit first. Right. You got to chew through that first. Exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. And oh, yeah. by the way, there's this thing called extended pretend. <laughs> They're not afraid to do that, clearly. I, I think when you look at uh, at least the publicly traded REIT market, so the publicly traded real estate market, what you can come to the realization of, and 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 maybe I'm wrong, but I think what you can see is that the baby got thrown out with the bathwater. Yeah. It was everything got taken down. And so you look at things that might be office space oriented and you go, okay, maybe that's warranted because people are working from home to a larger extent than they were before. And office space in New York City is hitting you know vacancy rates that are historic highs. But- is everything else need to be taken down along with it? Um, retail, uh, debatable, right? Um, but you look at things like warehousing, that probably hasn't changed all that much. But again, everything in the commercial real estate had this black eye and got simultaneously taken down. So maybe this is a realization that, again, from a wide standpoint, we over-reserved here for some of this stuff that actually is more money good than what we anticipated. Yeah, I think that's exactly what that is. But if we go back to kind of big bank, take little bank, I'm really looking at the regionals because the big six are fine. I mean, yep. stop talking about them, but the regional banks that come up and there's, you know, 50 of them, it's a, it's a pretty big week for regional banks. I'm going to be looking at cash balances, loan loss reserves, um, new loans, right? What is their appetite? And 
you know, all of those things. Cause their appetite's low. Let me tell you, let me tell you what their appetite is. It's how low is their appetite for loaning? Um, yeah. Lending right now, I mean, every regional bank in the Sluice report, which comes out um, perpetually throughout the year, has said, listen, we're going to tighten our standards across the board. Mm-hmm. And that is, you know, they can't, from, from a Fed interest rate perspective going so high, they can't afford to make bad loans right now and make mistakes. And so they are tightening their belt on that front. We'll see where it winds up trickling through. It hasn't seemed to play out that broadly from an economic standpoint. The impact hasn't been there yet. That's the lag effect that the Fed always talks about, though. Yeah, and, but the lag, you know, it's kind of like in sports, there's this thing called father time, right? Father time is undefeated. Yep. I think the lag effect is undefeated. I yep. think we've I think we've done a fair job of, you know, keeping the lag effect at bay, certainly probably longer than most thought. But you can't raise it 525 basis points in 13 months. Right. And not eventually get kicked in the teeth. Yeah. 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 Agreed. And it's, it's the regional banks that take it on the chin more than anybody else. But you know what, you know, it's an interesting one. And, and Jamie Dimon's comments last week were kind of, I think they were pointed. So when he talked about the fact that the Fed was going to go to seven, right, we could see Fed funds rate at 7%. Yeah. He was throwing a little jab there at his partner, Brian Moynihan, who is the CEO at Bank of America. Brian yeah. Moynihan and Bank of America extended duration of their bonds last year. And it was at a brutal time, as you obviously see interest rates continue to move upwards and them just going to have to write down losses across the board on a lot of those bonds. Bank of America is one in addition to the regional banks that I'll be watching for that very reason. How bad is it? Because they have publicly spoken about the fact that they extended duration. Well, I see a lot of hold to maturity on Bank of America's balance sheet. Yeah, 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 exactly. We'll hold on to this for another 20 years because apparently they extended like long, duration. long duration, 10, oh. 10 plus, 10 plus years of, uh, of until maturity. So, um, and again, wow. we'll get more details on that, but that was the, the scuttle on the street, uh, talking about where their duration actually got, you know, extended yeah. out to. I think Bank of America reports tomorrow morning. So that ought to be interesting to kind of look at. Keep so. your eyes open on that one. There you go. Any other, any other, what do you think in regional banks? I mean, there's, there's gotta be, there has to be more consolidation. Big bank, take little banks coming, right? Yeah. Or little bank, take little bank, right? One with a little bit better of a position um, ends up. It, it's funny when you rewind back and you look at Silicon Valley bank and you look at first Republic bank, they were a victim of their own success. They yes. raised a ton, a ton of new money. Now Silicon Valley bank is in the hotbed of tech, you know, the tech world. And in mm-hmm. 2021, when VC money was flying all over the place into the hands of these up and coming tech companies, they were housing that money at SVB. Well, guess what was simultaneously playing out? an ultra, 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 ultra low interest rate environment. And so they bought bonds at compressed levels, yields that were essentially zero on the 10-year treasury at the time. And then all of a sudden you had this massive pop from the zero-ish. Now that's a a little bit of an exaggeration, but sub 1% all the way up to now closing in on 5%. And that was just the massive you know, victim of their own success that they were. And, and, you know, bond mismanagement, don't get me wrong. You have to understand interest rate risk is a real risk. Yeah, absolutely. So at the end of the day, what other than Bank of America, what are you looking at this week when you think about the regional banks and big banks? Yeah, I, I, it's interesting is that the, the big banks all showed really solid net interest margin. It'll yeah. be interesting to see what we can do on the regional bank standpoint, because again, regionals now are having to pay a lot to maintain deposits. And people are yes. like, hey, I'm not sure I want my over 250000 that is not FDIC insured banked with someone that is a mom and pop bank for for you know, a lack of a better way of putting it, I'll move it to Chase. And I know Chase is safe because if something were to happen to them, the government would help out there. And so with that, Chase didn't have to raise their you know deposit, you know, savings deposit rates, but the little mm-hmm. banks did. And I don't know what their net interest margin is going to look like. It's not going to be as pretty as the big banks. No, it can't be. Yeah, they're definitely paying a lot more. At the end of the day, folks, uh, where can they find you, Taylor? Yeah, find me at Life Goal Investments. We're on both Instagram and TikTok. One minute daily videos breaking things down. Awesome, buddy. Thank you so much.